Thank you for coming to another one of my vlog posts here on the Rise of the Female Gaze. And today I wanted to take the time to share with you my three minute story. So I will admit my three minute story is much like my elevator pitch that I previously shared with you, except some key details that are gonna be different from my three minute story compared to my elevator pitch is that my three minute story is gonna be more conversational. So some of the concepts and theoretical terms I used in my elevator pitch I'm going to negate because in a three minute story, my phrasing is supposed to be more conversational since I'm speaking to a general audience. And I'm going to really focus on what you as a listener can take away from my research as I'm sharing it with you. So without a further ado, here is my three minute story. And I want to give you a heads up that normally you're supposed to have your three minute story memorized when you're going out in your community and sharing it. But because I just developed my three minute story, I don't have it memorized. So you may find me glancing to the side of my screen as I'm reviewing some of my notes and my scripts as I share it with you. So I hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, my name is Chantal Pierce and I'm a current student at the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire studying psychology and English with an emphasis in literature, culture, and film. Today, I wanted to take the time to inform you, as consumers of this country, why diverse representation in coming-of-age films is so important. So as an older sister, an aunt, a teacher, and a prominent figure in my community, I can't help but force myself to reflect, what can I do to support the next generation? Specifically, I question, what can I do to foster a generation that is confident, that is compassionate, and that is empathetic? As an English scholar, this pointed me to the work of Rudine Sims Bishop. In her essay, Mirrors, Windows, and Sliding Glass Doors, Rudine Sims Bishop writes, and I quote, when children cannot find themselves reflected in the books they read, or when the images they see are distorted, negative, or laughable, they learn a powerful lesson about how they are devalued in the society of which they are a part of. Now, I will admit, when I first hear this quote, I can't help but laugh those Gen Z kids reading a book? This is the iPad generation we're talking about. But even this stereotype raises a new contemporary concern. If children nowadays are so dependent on technology, where are they getting their messages of validation? This pointed me to the direction of film. We know from previous psychological studies, children sometimes rely on movies as a form of education. For example, children will watch romance movies to learn about love. Children will watch action movies to learn about self-defense and so on and so on. So with this knowledge in mind, I predicted that children nowadays would rely on coming of age films because these films center self-exploration to learn about finding their place in society. The problem with this prediction is a lot of identities are withheld from these narratives. So what are we as a society saying to these children about their place in the world? This is why being a consumer is so important. Through our spending, we have the opportunity to tell and reinforce to producers what narratives we want to see in films. In addition, with the purchasing of diverse coming of age films, we have the opportunity to distribute these stories to the current generation to reinforce their value to society and in the hopes that they will continue to reinforce future generations as well. With conscious spending, we have the opportunity to slowly lessen the impact of generational trauma of racism, sexism, ableism, and more. Thank you.